Hi everyone, this is Laura. I hope you're all having a blessed weekend tonight. Um, I am going to be doing a sunflower tutorial by request. I had one of my sweet dear friends here on YouTube request that I help her out in making some sunflowers because hers were coming out a little blotchy. So she just wanted to see what I did and how I did it. So I said, sure, I'll do that for you. So let me share with you real quick. We are creating some sunflowers using this dye. And this is a dye by Diamond Dyes. And this is what they look like. Or what, rather what the dye looks like. You're also going to need a pair of tweezers. Um, you're going to need two styluses. One with a very small, small point, And one with a large rounded point. And if you don't have something with a very small fine point, I find that if you do it carefully, any picker, your Tim Holtz picker, um, anything with a sharp edge or even a dull sharp edge, which would be better, you can also use. And I'll give you an example of that later. You can also, some of you have in your stash, these little wooden sticks either for shish kebab or um, candy apples. The kids ate all the candy apples and you have the sticks left over or whatever, whatever little craft stick with a fine point, um, but not too fine would be good. You're also going to need, what else? Some glue. I love my quick dry scotch adhesive and I'm trying to remember and I do use my hot glue gun as well and some sponges so what I did first to create these sunflowers is I did it with a sponge and I dabbed it in real good and I just I pounce on it and I covered the entire flower with the mustard seed. And I just pounce, pounce, pounce because I do want that blotchy effect. And I also found that sometimes when these inks dry, um, they do appear a lot lighter than they really are. But if you can see there, that's all I did to color it. I don't have any blotches. I didn't use sprays either. Um, I find sometimes the sprays can leave a lot more blotchiness than the actual distressed inks. Um, if you want to color them with water, you can do that too. Um, and you can also probably manipulate your flower a little better. Since I like to put the added creases on the petal leaves just for texture, I don't really like to use the water. As a matter of fact, even with the petals, once I do this, I do try to give it a few minutes um, to dry. And if I feel that it's a little damp, I will um, I'll heat it with the heat gun. So I'm just pouncing up and down until I feel I have full coverage of the mustard seed. And as you can see, they're all very nicely covered. Now to create my sunflowers, I used three of the larger petal die and two of the smaller petal. So that would be five. And when I say petals, it's not really a petal, I meant the flower. I used three of the large one, which is this one. And so you can tell the difference in the sizes. I used three of the large and two of the small. And this is, I believe, the last one. Yep. And once we get all this covered with ink, then you're going to need some kind of a mouse pad or a foam pad or a piercing pad of some sort, something with some rubber, rubbery 
uh, rubbery, you know, foamy rubberiness to it so that um, it'll cushion your flower when you're embossing on it. Because that's what basically I'm about to do right now is I'm just going to emboss on the flowers. Now I am going to, excuse me one second, I am going to dry these real quick with the heat gun because it still feels a little damp. And I only do it for a few seconds. It doesn't really need much. They're not that wet at all. I just don't want my um, petals to tear when I start embossing them. Now I'm going to be putting several, several layers of color. And uh, I do that after I do the little leaves and I emboss the little leaves. Now, um, I was telling you earlier, if you do not have um, a very fine stylus, you can also use a pick. And what you want to do is very gently, you just want to scratch along the petals. And then what that's going to do, and I don't know if the camera's going to pick up on that, you're going to see like these little ridges. And of course, you'll see that more when you um, apply the darker inks on it. So for time, I'm going to grab my stylus because I can do this a lot faster with a stylus than I could with that um, pick. I'm just giving you alternatives if you don't have a very small. And if it's not a small tip, if you try to do it with something larger like this, it's not going to work. Um, it will definitely not to come come out the same at all so you definitely want to try to use a very fine head stylus one with a very very small um, the pointier the better and I don't even think I have the right one to be quite honest yeah I knew it this one is a little bit smaller and very fine and one of the ways that I know that I am doing the right thing is the petals will automatically curl for me. Now, I don't know if you can pick that up on the camera, but it does have texture on the leaves. And I pretty much do that to all my leaves and all my petals. Now, I don't think you want to see me do this to all the petals um well actually you know what i have a few little announcements to make so maybe i can talk and work real fast and then you won't mind so much so guys as you know i or maybe you don't know maybe you haven't heard have you heard the big news i am going to be giving away two dies on a giveaway challenge that I'm having on my channel. In case you have not heard, you will be getting, and let me grab those dice real quick so I can show you, you're going to be receiving the Realistic Rose die, and you're also going to be receiving the Small Marnock Butterfly die. So if you wanna know how to get a chance, on winning that tie, I would go and watch the video and get all the details. You don't want to be left out. You can win two amazing great ties. I also wanted to thank all my friends out there who so have well who have gone over to Diamond Dye's website and purchased some wonderful dyes. And those of you who've used my coupon code, thank you so much for your support. It does mean a lot. Um, you know, it's nice that it's almost like a double win situation because you get something new to play with and a wonderful product. And I get the love and support. <laughs> So isn't that awesome? I think so. And this one, 
is still just a teeny tiny temp. I might have missed it. I do get a little nervous, guys, when I'm doing tutorials. I don't know why. I just think that I'm not all that great on it. And by nature, I talk way too much anyways. So um, I just never know. <coughs> Excuse me. With my tutorials, I just never know if... Um, I just get nervous. I just never know if I'm doing a good job or not. So please bear with me. Okay, so I've scraped all the edges. I've inked them all with mustard seed. I pounced on them using a very simple um, makeup sponge. Now I am going to color and distress them. And this is what I do. Sweetie, are you looking? This is all I do. I just pounce on them just like so. And they will pick up the embossing on the leaves. Then I go into my wild honey. And I go to a clean side of the sponge. And this is what I do. Very random. And let me show you what that looks like when you do that. Then I will go back into the dried marigolds, get the marigold side, and just very lightly hit the tips of the leaves. Very lightly. See that? And we're not done yet, so they might not look like much just yet but give it a second it will I promise you okay I'm satisfied with how much dried marigolds I have on it now I am going to go into my vintage photo and for this I will get my tool um, and I'm just gonna very quickly very lightly distress the edges or the outer edges of my leaves my petals rather just like that see that do it again and what I like to do sometimes is I just do them all on one side, going this way like a pinwheel, and then I go the other side. That way I'm sure to catch all the petals. And I don't um, do too much damage to the leaves embossing. I don't get it too wet. And that's another thing. You don't want to... Um, want to be careful when you're pouncing on them because then all that embossing texture that you gave the petals will be for nothing so you want to do it very gently and I really think that the vintage photo against the yellow it's what gives it the prettiness that it gets and it really really sets the petals apart when you layer them really nice it makes them stand out a lot more I am really really loving these um, in different colors boy I didn't think they would look that great like I was scared that it wouldn't look realistic oh my goodness but I am really 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 happy with um, with the results of that I was really, really impressed. Okay, so that's about as much vintage photo as I want to put for right now. Where's my cover? Now I am going to go into the Spice Marmalade. And I'm going to use the same sponge only because it's darker and I don't really have to worry about that. And now I am going to try very lightly, barely touching it. I'm just going to rub it over the petals just to bring out those little veins that I created. And it's going to be really, really light, like a really light hand here. 
like I said, you're going to do a very light hand because A, you don't want the petals to get squished. You don't want it to get very wet and you don't want to take away from all the work you put into um, giving it that deep vein to look on the petals with your embossing stick or with your stylus rather. Now I'm going to go back just to blend it all I took a clear sponge I'm going to go back into the mustard seed and I'm just going to apply some more of this color and that's just going to blend it all for me and it's also going to bring out the um, orange and the dried marigold and the spice marmalade out a little bit more and this one instead of pouncing like I did to add the ink on I'm just swiping just swiping or rather wiping <laughs> swipe and a wipe just swiping away like that and this is now let me show you something guys you see this petal you can see the colors it doesn't really look blotchy and you can see the veins and if I want a little bit of more of the brown I can add it if I want it more of the dark orange I can add it now let me show you this one you see that big blotch here in the center the reason I didn't really care about that and that doesn't really upset me so much is because when you layer this and we are going to layer them you don't see any of that so if you have those like big blotches don't worry about it it's not gonna show it's not it's not gonna um, show up and once you put your flower together it's gonna look like part of the distressing and the highlighting of the flower and I hope that makes sense <laughs> so once I've done that, now I'm ready to put my flower together. Let me get my glue gun. I think, um, I'm pretty sure I had it heating up. Let me just check it. Yep, it's nice and hot. And I have the teeny tiny um, glue gun here. So I'm going to start with my largest petal first and I am going to put them together before I actually glue them and what I like to do is just maneuver the petals so that I can try to cover as many of the empty space that I can simply by just moving the layers around then I will bend it slightly like so I'll put a little bead of glue, not too much, because I don't want this to have a lot of bulk in the center, because I'm still going to take my stylus. And, um, oh, actually, guys, let me do that real quick with the other ones. The smaller ones are the ones that are most important. I almost forgot that step. You want your large stylus, and what you're going to do is you're just going to go around, 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 around in the center of the flowers now you should do that part before you glue it together um i just forgot <laughs> but i also do this when i glue them all together in the end um just to make sure that they do stand up so no worries if you didn't do it in the beginning like i did you can do it at the end and then i will add another little bead of glue and I will put the next large flower again, offsetting just a little bit, like so. Then I'll add another little piece of glue in the center, or another bead of glue, piece of glue. <laughs> another little bead of glue. Now, can you see the house that's coming along so far? Glue string, hello. And I will add some more glue to the center and this is my last layer and try to save your prettiest petal 
or the one that you think came out the prettiest for last. So this is how I ink them and put them together. Now for the center, um, I am going to put something different than I did in my other videos. But for the center of the flower, I use vintage photo and gathered twig. And I just um, put some ink down on my craft mat. I'm going to get a very, very small paintbrush. And I'm just going to add some water to that. And I want a nice um, size puddle. And then you're just going to very quickly, because it's going to soak up the ink pretty fast, I'm just going to color the center of my sunflower, like so. And then I'm going to spray a little more water, because for this part, I don't want it as dark as the other ink that I used here. Then I'm going to take my paintbrush and I'm just going to flick going out away from the from the center away. I'm just going to flick, 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 flick and just give it that nice little deep sunflower color that we see sometimes towards the center. And I'm going to do that going all the way around. Just flick out, flick in, flick out, flick in until you're happy with the color. Now is when I will use my heat gun and dry that up just a little bit. Just so that I can see that it's dark enough. But also to dry the center so I can glue down what I need to glue down. Now, do you see what I'm saying? Once it's dry, and this is not completely dry, but once it does get dry, it looks dark when you paint it, but as it dries, it gets a lot um, lighter. So I just go back in and add some more of the darker to the center again, because I do want the center of this one a little bit darker. And then I'll add the water down to the outside again. And just this is just creating another layer of highlights. And I might throw in a few of the darker ones. Not too much. We don't want it too dark. And I think I'm going to add a little bit more here too. Just to give it some shadow. There we go. And now I'm going to heat it again. So that's what my sunflower looks like so far. Now for the center of the flower, you can use whatever you like. You can use flat back pearls, rhinestones, gems, just like I did. Or you can use some brown cardstock with the little dots that the die comes with. And I think for my flower here, looking at it now that it's dry, I'm going to go into my dried marigold and just very lightly add some highlights to my flower. And there you go. So my dear sweet friend, I hope this video helps you creating some of your sunflowers with your dye and I hope this helps all my other subscribers too. 
if you want to purchase the sunflower dye I will have a link in the description box below for the website and please don't forget to use your coupon code Laura's friend to receive 10% off of your dye plus free shipping thank you all for watching and have a blessed weekend bye for now